you know, until I started surrounding myself with people that were at a different level than me, mm. I thought my level was sufficient, mm. right? Because you, we surround ourselves with the same people sometimes and, yeah. and we kind of, if we want to or not, we compare where we're at to, with them, mm. right? So we're like, oh, I'm making a bit more money than this person, or I have a bit more time or, you know, they seem, we're always kind of comparing. Mm. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I like it, man, the best version of myself back in the day was, it, it scares me now to think that was my best version. But the thing is, it's all I knew, mm. right? And I had never been exposed to anything or to an environment that would allow me to go find a different version. See, a lot of times we just get, we get caught in our routine. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Life by Design with Steve Holbrook. And I'm in the studio today with a very, very special ginger. I mean, guest. <laughs> My brother from another mother, Chad Thompson. We have known each other for many years. I don't know, I'm sure if I'm allowed to say how long. Long time. It's been a long time. Yeah, older than some people watching this. Yes, yeah. for sure, older than yeah. some people watching this. Yeah. If you have a Snapchat account, uh, you were not born when Chad and I met. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but no, it's, it, I'm excited to have Chad here. He's my best friend. We've been in business for a long time. We've been through a lot of stuff together. And, uh, you know, Chad has some very unique gifts and blessings that I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of today and uh, appreciate being here, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Looking yeah. Forward, this is, I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So why don't you tell the people watching, listening a little bit about yourself and sure. maybe how we met and go from yeah. there? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I'm born and raised here in Calgary, right? Grew up here my whole life and, uh, like a lot of people had no clue what I wanted to do really coming out of school. So I hopped around uh, post-secondary schools, all of them, some of them twice and uh, ended up falling into the restaurant industry. And that's actually where we, you know, where we met at Earl's mm -hmm. and uh, it was fun. Right. I mean, we had some pretty good times there and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we always got along really well. And I worked with Earl's and Joey's group for a number of years and, and it was a great company. It actually really allowed me to come out of my shell. I was very shy growing up mm -hmm. and then uh, working the restaurant business really opened me up. But, you know, the longer I was in that industry, um, you know, I got recruited by some other companies and started working for them and, and it was fun, but it just started to get very mundane and very the same. So I thought maybe I should go into management, mm -hmm. make this a career. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I didn't realize that you make less and you work more. Isn't that and funny how it, that works? Funny how that works. And, uh, I started to take over some places down here in, in Calgary on 17th Avenue and, and it was great. I learned a lot about business. I learned a lot about people, uh, learned how to manage people. But again, you, I just kind of had hit a point in my career where I was capped out going, man, what do I, what do I do? Like I was just feeling very, very stuck and uh, almost at a point where I was just almost getting depressed going, man, what am I going to do with my life? Like if this is all I've done for 10 years, it had kind of become my identity mm. and I didn't really know how to shift my identity. Mm. And, um, you know, thank goodness, uh, you know, people approached me. Uh, from this company. Mm -hmm. Right. And after about five or six times of being invited out <laughs> to sit down, I finally sat down and um, I was just really impressed by, by what you were up to. Mm -hmm. And I remember you walking into that appointment, hadn't seen you for yeah. years. And I was like, Whoa, Steve's here. Starbucks on 17th. Starbucks on 17th. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. Yeah. And uh, I was just really impressed by how you guys helped me out financially. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I had kind of been hanging on to this dream of being a restaurant owner Mm. And had kind of had this carrot dangling in front of me. And, mm. and, uh, you know, I know we talked about business at the time and the time it was just wrong. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'll just still never forget the day you came in to the restaurant for a client review mm -hmm. and, uh, the timing was right. Yeah. Right. I knew it wasn't going anywhere. And, um, you know, that's when I came to the office, I started here, you know, with a company part time and I just fell in love with it, man. Like I fell in love with just the people I fell in love with the energy. Mm -hmm. It was just a different vibe than I've ever experienced before. It was kind mm. of like a, when I played a lot of competitive sports, it was very similar to that mm. team feel, you awesome. know? Yeah. And I was just, I loved it. And, uh, you know, so when I got licensed and, and we came in here and, you know, my first appointment was, as you remember with my mom, Yeah. try not to get too emotional, but, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, for us to sit down and do what we did for her as a, as a single mom who raised me, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a legal assistant, we didn't have a lot of money growing up mm -hmm. and, and the things we were able to do for her financially and free up that cash flow and get her protected and man, save that money. I was, I was locked into this right away. Mm. I'd never been in an environment where people talked big and had a vision and, and talked about where they were going all the time instead of talking about what had happened or the weekend. Mm. And I was, I just love the fact that, that that happened. And then obviously we helped out my grandpa and, yeah. you know, I phased in full time and, 
And uh, it, it was fun. You know, I learned how to this business pretty quick and, and it was great. And, you know, like we're going to talk about today, I, I didn't <clears throat> really start to grow in business until I started to grow myself. Mm-hmm. But just, you know, the last 15 years here have been unbelievable, you know, meeting my wife here and and the friendships we've made and the, I mean, the places you and I have yeah, been it's crazy. And the list, I, sometimes I forget about the places we've been. It's crazy. Yeah. Like you sit back and start to write it down and you go, wow, we're blessed, right? Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then just, you know, even with my mom passing in 2017, just mm-hmm. having a business where I didn't have to worry about money, mm-hmm. you know, I did, you know, the company still put a good amount of money in my bank account and we got to take time to heal as a family and, and all the plans we put in place helped out big time with that. And then just fast forwarding today, you know, like opening this office we have here in Calgary with you and having our team in Kelowna and Red Deer. And, you know, I just love it. And I love the person we're becoming along the way, but, but even still who we're still becoming. Yeah. Right. And that's been the best part of it. And I've just, I've just enjoyed every moment of this journey, Mm. even the hard parts. Yeah. Yeah. It's not been easy. No, no. But I mean, it's the hard parts that make us who we are. So, yeah. yeah. I love when Chad tells a story. Um, because I've been a part, I've been, I've been front row to, to watching him, the ups, the struggles, the, the push through. And I think, you know, for those of you that, that know Chad, know this to be true, what I'm about to say about him. But uh, for those of you that don't, I think one of my favorite things about Chad is his openness to work on himself, right? Chad is very open to work on himself and he has developed an extremely high level of self-awareness. And I love being around Chad because I love being around people that have that high level of self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just, you know, I want to acknowledge you for Thanks, yeah. going on that journey. Yeah. It's a lot. Inspiring me. I know your wife, Jen, is a huge part of that. Yeah. And, uh, but I want to get into that. You know, it's, um, I want to, I want to dive deep into that. You've talked a lot about, um, you know, creating the best version of yourself and yep. different talks. And, and uh, I want to, I want to, you know, for all, for all you guys watching here today, we all have this version of ourselves that we're living in today. And, you know, on the other side of the version we are today is a new version. And uh, once we hit that new version, a whole new world opens up. And, and I'm, my outcome by the end of this podcast is, is for you to learn a little about how that works, why it's important. And I think we have the best guy today to talk about that. So awesome. thanks, buddy. Yeah. So yeah, what, why don't we start with why it's important to start creating that new version of ourself or best version of ourself? Yeah. And that's a great question. And, you know, it's funny for years until, you know, until I started surrounding myself with people that were at a different level than me, mm. I thought my level was sufficient, Mm. right? Because we surround ourselves with the same people sometimes. And, and we kind of, if we want to or not, we compare where we're at with them. Mm. Right. So we're like, Oh, I'm making a bit more money than this person, or I have a bit more time or, you know, they seem we're always kind of comparing. Mm. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I like it, man, the best version of myself back in the day was, it it scares me now to think that was my best version. But the thing is, it's all I knew. Mm. Right. And I had never been exposed to anything or to an environment that would allow me to go find a different version. See, a lot of times we just get, we get caught in our routine. And just, if I could hop in on that too, I think that you really made me think of something, the best version, how we like, how we look at the best version of ourselves now, like, like, you know, 20 years ago, the best version of myself was I could drink a 40 pounder of rye in one night. (laughs) And I was at my peak. I was like, I could drink more rye now than I could last month or man, I can, I can drink more and be less hungover. How we even evaluate the best version changes. Yeah, that's very <laughs> so true. Funny. I can relate to that a lot. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. No, that was definitely my old best version of myself too. Right. was, hey, how late can I stay out and kind of feel good the next day? Right. Right. And still get some stuff done. But that, that was it. My, my identity back then was just how, how fun I was. Mm-hmm. Right. It was just, I just wanted to be the fun guy and like, mm-hmm you know, whatever that took and maybe partying too much and Mm -hmm. drinking too much. But that was just my identity at the time because I just wanted to be likable. Yeah. Right. And that was, that was how I knew how to at that time. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. So Chad, you, you had this old identity, right? He had this old identity and now he, he started to get around new associations. Hope you guys picked up on that. And for whatever reason, you know, started to, you know, Tony Robbins talks about if you're driving down the highway and you stare into the right ditch, you're eventually going to hit the right ditch. So by being around those people, he eventually started to transition. But I think that's where a lot of people get caught. Yep. A lot of people get caught in this, this cycle of old identity keeps pulling you back. And I know it took you a little while, but how did that breakthrough start to happen? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think it, it happens in small, you know, when you look back, you can notice it, but at the time you don't even know it's happening. 
right? But it's it's putting yourself in different situations that might be a little uncomfortable, um, that might be something you're not used to, something mm. different. Like for me coming into th- this industry, that was a whole new thing. Mm. So it was uncomfortable. So even little things like, and I didn't notice the changes happening at the time, mm-hmm. but it's, again, like you said, when you're surrounding yourself with higher identity people, mm-hmm. you see how they operate. Mm-hmm. So you start operating a bit different way. You get up a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. right? You work a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Um, you're a little more focused. You're, you know, you write your goals down, all these little things. And eventually, you know, it might feel like three, four, five months. You're like, man, I feel like I'm the same person. Mm-hmm. That's how you feel, but it's what other people see. I have a lot of teammates will come to me. They're like, man, I've been doing this for three, four, five months. And I'm like, yeah, you look, you're a whole different person. Just so you know, Wow. I see you differently now than I, than I saw you before, but people on the outside notice, but sometimes we don't notice. Huh. Right. And I just remember, I'll tell you a quick story. I, yeah. I remember my aunt was driving me to the, to the airport one day. And, um, this is one of the best compliments I've ever gotten mm-hmm. as far as like growing as a person. And, uh, she's just, we were talking about the business and she's like, yeah, she's just like, looks like it's going really well. And she's like, we're very, you know, really proud of you. And we're seeing all these changes in you. And she just said, she said, I, she goes, I mean this in the nicest way. She goes like, you were a good son before, but you're a whole, you're a, a way better son to your mom now than you were before. Just as far as like committing time to her and helping her out and things like that. But that's something I didn't notice. Wow. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah. So for somebody who's, you know, maybe struggling in the old identity or really trying to make the next move, um, and you probably agree, like the changes first, you have to make the commitment and then, then everything else changes from that. You know, I think yep. people they're chasing money, they're chasing success, they're chasing, uh, this, this life, but they haven't changed themselves first. Yep. Right. So from what I heard, you changed yourself and all the success came. So where does somebody start, Chad? Yeah. Good question. I mean, I think it, it just starts with little things like I'm a big, I mean, and I'm so grateful for my wife for this, right. Yeah. For, um, you know, getting us started in personal development courses and things like that. But I think it starts with, you know, even starting to pick up good books, you know, watching some podcasts. I mean, a big one for me was when you actually start spending time writing down your goals and reading them and writing down things you want. It just kind of starts to change your identity. But, you know, I knew for me, it had, something had to be a bit different. Like I couldn't keep doing the same things and expect to grow. So was that a, was that a moment where you were, where you had this realization of like, holy shit, like I have to get better. Yes. It was 2012. <laughs> oh, there was a moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember it. It was, it, you know, cause I mean, for the first, you know, first part of those first five years of my business here. And I think my whole life, I just kind of coasted on my personality. Yeah. You know, I felt like I, I'm very good with people. Yeah. I can get along with people really well. And Charismatic. I kind of, yeah, I yeah. coasted on that. Yeah. And I kind of just Rode that as long as I could, yeah. I guess. And then I just had a moment in 2012 where, you know, things in my life were a bit catastrophic or whatever you want to say. And, you know, my income had dipped and I was going, man, I have to start doing, I remember sitting on the couch one day at home and I was just, it was during the summer Olympics of that, that year. Mm. And I was just going, man, if I don't start doing something differently, nothing's going to change. Mm. And I just literally, literally had this like aha moment where I was going, man, like, if I want something different for my life, if I want different results, if I want a a relationship, all these things, something's got to change. And then I really realized at that moment that if I don't start changing, Mm. nothing changes, right? I can't expect everything around me to change and me be the exact same person. So did, did you have to wait for that moment to find you or like, how do I find that moment? Is it, you, and you talked about it a bit before, I'm wondering if, if, if you think this is part of the answer, is it through setting goals and really focusing on what your, what your life wants to be that you really come to that moment or is it just happen? I think it's a bit of both. Okay. You know, I think, I mean, doing some of the courses we've done, like, uh, like the Joe Dispenza courses that we've done right. and getting into meditation and being in that you know, learning to be in that future self and be in those future feelings. And I think the benefit of writing your goals down and and not just writing them down, but actually like sitting with them and feeling what that would feel like, mm. right? Like don't just write down, Hey, I want I'm going to earn this much money and be like, cool, like sit down and actually feel what it would be like to earn that much money that whether it's the freedom it gives you or whatever, mm. or to have this type of relationship or whatever. I think once I really started to learn to spend time in the feeling Mm. of that, even though it hadn't happened, but start to to feel that feeling, Mm. that's when a lot of things really started to change for me. And like the the Joe Dispenza thing was a huge part of that for me. Mm. Um, Just learning the power of our mind and the power of our thoughts 
was a big one, you wow. know, like, cause we do, we become what we think about. Yeah. Right. And just the way he explains it, that, you know, your, your, your subconscious has no idea what's real or what's not real. So if you're putting yourself in a position where you're always, you're thinking about the future and you're putting yourself in that moment, you start to like literally attract that to you mm. because your subconscious doesn't know that you're just mm. thinking that. Mm. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah when you really start to feel it. Yeah. So you've talked, you've talked in the past. I've heard you talk about Joe Spence. You brought it up here today. Yep. What are some other courses or some other, you know, development programs you've been a part of that you can accredit to? Man, I think all of like, a few, but yeah, all of them are in one way or another. Yeah. Um, there's no, yeah, there, there's no bad growth. There's no bad growth in my growth. opinion. Like yeah. you go do a course and you're like, okay, that was good. And you take something different from every course. And I think the, the most important mm -hmm. thing with getting involved in things is that you're a diff, you're a different person every time you do it. Right. So you're not the same version of yourself. Like my very first course was something called warrior camp. Right. I remember. Yeah. Which yeah. is not, it's not what it sounds I, like. I imagined uh, him, <laughs> him going away and face painting himself and going, throwing spears and <laughs> sacrificing somebody. Yeah. But it wasn't. And I remember, and I remember, and this was actually a defining moment. I remember, you know, it's funny how God puts us in different situations. You know, I remember going to the event, my wife had bought it for us for our wedding. Mm. And I'm like, Hey, what is this event? She's like, I don't know. And I'm starting to get like anxiety. And then we get there and, and we're in the middle of Joshua Tree, California. We're the first people there at this shack in the middle of the desert. And I'm like, it's like here. Wow. And then we check in and I'm like, where's our room? She's like, oh, you're actually your wife's over there and you're over here. And now my anxiety is like full force. Yeah, you're pissed. I'm, I'm upset and I'm going. Yeah. And then I, I went to my room and I just thought, you know what, Chad, just go with it. Like, just mm. go with it. You're here for a reason. Is that that old identity coming it's in? The old identity come back, yeah. right? That like, it's not going exactly how I think it should be going. Yeah. So I'm going to fight it. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times when we don't think something's going the way we think it should be going, that's when that old identity shows up. Oof, right. Powerful. Instead of just going with it. And it turned out to be one of the best weeks of my life. Um, you know, that that was an amazing course. They also do a course called Wizard Camp, which changed my life. Um, you know, I recommend Landmark for people. Mm. Uh, I, you know, we've done numerous courses with Landmark. Personal Mastery. Personal Mastery yeah. through Clemmer. Yeah. Um, obviously, the Joe Dispenza events. I've been yeah. twice. Yeah. Um, you know. What's Our, next? Yeah, good question. I'm not sure. We're still still looking at that, but um, it's always something. Actually, no, sorry. We do have a Clemmer event in November in oh, San Diego. Awesome. Yeah, it's nice. called Heart of Samurai. So, Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's just about creating possibilities is all about, that's what that event's about. So Amazing. Yeah. I had a question that I wanted to ask you, um, and I wish she was here today with us, but how important has this journey been to do it with your partner? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I couldn't imagine doing it um, without her. You know, and it's, uh, you know, she makes me be a better version of myself, but, you know, just being on the same page with somebody that wants to grow, mm -hmm. you know, and that wants to do things with you. And I think if I can give it some kind of advice to anyone who's watching this mm -hmm. is that, yeah, maybe your partner might not be ready at the time. The best thing Jen ever did for me was not push me into it. Mm -hmm. Right. She didn't force me into it, but I started to see her do these court. Like she started, she was going to landmark and I was, she's like, oh, you should come check it out. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then finally I saw the change in her. So I was like, Hey, listen, I want to come check that out. Wow. So even if you have a partner, like still go grow yourself because they're going to see the difference in you. And the best way to, to, to help create change in them is to go ch create change in yourself. Mm. And when people see that version of you and they're going, man, I want, I want some of that. Mm. I want to be a part of that, you know? So it's been, uh, I mean, it's been so important. We've done every, you know, I did one course without her, right? Um, that was with, with my buddy, Ben, that the first Joe Dispenza trip and, uh, two pale gingers in Mexico, oh quite, my the, God. quite the, quite the trip. There was no sunscreen left no, on the not shelf. Not enough sunscreen left, but, yeah. uh, no, I mean, every other one I've done with her and yeah. it's been, uh, it's just been amazing journeys for us as a couple great conversations, uh, great connection. And it's, yeah, man, I, I, I can't put enough words on it, how important it is to do with your partner. All right. I want to transition a little bit into entrepreneurship. Uh, obviously you're an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, even if you're not an entrepreneur and you, you know, you, you're, you're an employee or an entrepreneur within your job, entrepreneurship is tough, mm -hmm. right? It's a grind yep. and there's a lot of ups and downs just with starting a business. And what would you say to somebody who, you know, is maybe struggling in business and hasn't really fully embraced, um, you know, the, the self-development side mm. to, as to how important that's going to be for them to be able to succeed. Yeah. And that's now, I mean, the nice part about hindsight is it's 2020, yeah. right? So uh, it's something I wish I would have done earlier. Right. 
because kind of like I said before, you know, my, and this is just my belief, my income and where I was at was tied directly to my identity Mm -hmm. and my beliefs around certain things that was all tied to that identity. So as I started to grow my, grow myself and expand my mind, it's weird that things open up. Right. And so being an entrepreneur, you know, you have to, I believe you got to learn to, to really handle adversity. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a bit different. Like when I had a job, yes, there was adversity, but True. there was always somebody kind of there to help me out. Yeah. You know, with entrepreneurship, you have to be chasing that best version of yourself because it helps you with the adversity. You stay a little calmer, yeah. right? You know that it's not, that it's just an event kind of like, like Ed Milet talks about, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Yeah. And I think that's some of the biggest things I've learned through doing personal development with entrepreneurship. And again, you just see all the people who are successful Mm. and it's funny, all of them work on themselves. Yeah. Right. So it's just kind of like success leaves clues everywhere. You know, even like you said, if you're an entrepreneur or even an employee at a, at a, you know, you have a team, I mean, we work with people. Yeah. Right. And everyone's different. So the thing with personal growth is that learning to deal with different people and understand that everyone has their own story, they have their own background, they're dealing with their own identity, but having the skills to do that, it just makes things so much more open, Mm. right? And so much more relatable and you can have better conversations. You you know, as you're talking, it got me thinking about kind of the state of the world today in 2023. Mm -hmm. And I think about when you and I got into business 15 years ago, where the world was then and where the world is now. Different place. I mean- People get offended easier. You, it, it's like you, you say one thing, the people that you, you know, you talk to one group of people, the other group um, accuses you of not being inclusive. You talk to the other group, right? You make a right wing comment, the left wings after you. Lo- it's just, it just seems like what you're talking about more than ever is so important right now yep. just to get through what we're, what we're getting through. Yeah. hundred percent, man. I mean, it's just, it's having the realization that you know, a number one, people are doing the best that they can. You know, everyone's coming from a different place, like kind of like you said, and it's not, It here's the biggest thing. It's not right and it's not wrong. That's just that point of view, right? And I, and I agree with what you said. So many people are like, well, that's wrong. Right. Well, that's right. Well, no, it's not anything. Mm-hmm. It's whatever you want to make it, right? So that's what somebody thinks is wrong. Somebody might think is right and vice versa. That's their story around it, right? So just knowing that, I mean, one of the best things I've ever heard is that everything is nothing. Everything's nothing until the the meaning that we attach to it. And I think that's one of the biggest things as an entrepreneur is that everything's nothing, right? That client quitting or a teammate quitting or something happening in your business, it's nothing. It's just the meaning that we give it, right? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> that's so powerful. Yeah. Can you imagine being the 2008 version of yourself going through society today? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I could have a few drinks back then. I'd probably be really good at having a few drinks now. Right. On your soapbox, standing on the corner downtown Calgary. Oh man, that would, yeah. No, I can't. Uh, sign. No, I can't. I, even with COVID and everything yeah. that, that happened, um, I couldn't imagine being that old version of myself. Right. Like it, it freaks me out. Yeah. I mean, we, st- you still got your opinion. Yeah. hundred percent. People that know you well, know where you're at, right? Yep. We, you have, we have our views and, and we should, and we're informed and, you know, things like that. But holy man, all the personal growth that you've been through and, and that I've been through. Yeah. Thank God. It, it is. It's a blessing. Yeah. Like, you know, I look at, you know, you look at things that happen in your life, whether it's losing a loved one, mm-hmm. um, you know, problems in business, health complications, whatever it might be. You know, and I think, man, how would that version of myself 15 years ago handled those things? Awesome. And it would, and it was way different now than it would have been, you know? So it's, I just think it's, and here's the cool part. I know that in 10 years from now, yeah. I'll look back at now and go, man, my, this, this Chad handles things way different than 10 years ago, Chad. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting here thinking and, uh, you know, Mike, I have three kids and they're, you know, 11, nine and eight. And as, as this is being filmed and I think about where the world is today and, you know, you bring up 10 years from now, I think about how important it's going to be for me and all the parents out there yep. to start to instill some of this mindset in our kids. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. Prepare them. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's a great thing. A lot of those, if you are a parent watching, um, a lot of those courses I mentioned too, um, they do offer courses for children, Wow, which is really cool. So you think, man, I look back and think, man, what if I could have learned this at like 12 or 13? Right. Like what, what kind yeah. of different mindset would that have given me growing up? Yeah. And I think it's so important for parents to look at that and go, yes, yeah, like I believe formal education is important, but man, to really, for kids to go start to learn who they are and how to work with other people and, and just these different things. I just think it's so valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 
Cool, man. This has been yeah. fun. It's been awesome. Should do it again. Absolutely. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, you guys. Now, I, I, I know you got some value out of today. I don't even hope you did. I know you got some value out of today. So I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, you know, make a comment, subscribe to the channel, share it with your team. And everybody in your organization needs to hear what Chad just said, because it's the key, right? To unlocking the future that you want. So appreciate you guys for being here. We'll see you on the next episode.